Good afternoon, Philippines. Here are the latest news from the business industry. This is Business News TV. So for today, we are going to talk about the sales force. The role of the sales force depends to a large extent on whether a company is selling directly to a consumers or to other businesses. The sales force is typically concerned simply with taking and closing orders. So joining me here today to talk about the sales force, we have here Ms. Myra Alvendia. Designing our sales force is one of the important factors to increase the business sales. So it is necessary to put the right person at the right position, right? Let's find out who are those people involved in this and what are their tasks. We have six representatives with their respective position to um, design our sales force. So we have the deliverer, a salesperson whose task is to deliver the product. Next is the order taker, which we have two types, the inside and outside order takers. When you say inside order takers, these are the in, uh, order takers who are standing behind the counter. Where the outside order takers, from the word itself, outside, it means they take orders outside the establishment. Next is the missionary. A salesperson aims to educate and build a goodwill to the potential and actual consumer of the product. But they do not take any orders like pharmaceutical dealers. Next is the technician. A salesperson with a high level of technical knowledge like sales engin uh, salesperson engineering. Next is the demand creator, which we have two types also. The intangible and tangible demand creator. When we say tangible demand creator, these are, these are the salesperson who demonstrate a tangible product like household product with creative way. Next is the intangible demand creator. Um, these are the salesperson who offers intangible product like insurances. And lastly, the solution vendor, a salesperson whose expertise is to solve customer problem, often with the system of companies products and services. So Myra Almendia, your news break reporter. To discuss the sales force objectives, strategy and structures, we have here Ms. Grace at De La Cruz. Sales force objectives and strategy. The days when all the sales force did was sell, sell and sell are long gone. To improve the customer's profitability, sales reps must be able to perceive customer's problem and be able to provide solutions instantly. They even go beyond the customer's stated problems to offer fresh insights into the customer's business model and uncover previously unidentified demands and issues. Performing their job, salespeople complete one or more specific tasks. First is prospecting, which is the searching for prospects or leads. Next is targeting. It is deciding how to allocate their time among prospects and customers. Third is communicating which is all about communicating information about the company's products and services. Fourth is selling, which is approaching, presenting, answering questions, overcoming objections, and closing sales. Next is servicing, the providing various services to the customers, consulting on problems, rendering technical assistance, arranging financing, and expediting delivery. Next is information gathering. The conducting market research and doing intelligence work. And last, allocating, which is deciding which customers will get scarce products during product shortages. To cut expenses, most businesses opt for a leveraged sales force that focuses reps on selling the company's bespoke and more complex products to large accounts while relying on inside salespeople and internet ordering for low end selling. Salespeople are given fewer accounts to work with and are rewarded for growing important accounts. Lead generation, proposal drafting, order fulfillment, and postal support are delegated to others. This is in stark contrast to the usual problem of regionally oriented sales forces, which is expecting salespeople to sell to every conceivable account. Sales force structure The structure of the sales force is also affected by the strategy. A territorial structure is used by a corporation that offers one product line to one end-using industry 
with consumers in multiple areas. On the other hand, a business that sells a variety of products to a variety of customers may require product or market structure. Some companies need a more complex structure and adopt some combination of four types of sales force. First, a strategic market sales force assigned to major accounts. Second, a geographic sales force calling on customers in different territories. Third, a distributor sales force calling on and coaching distributors. And last, an inside sales force marketing and taking orders online and via phone. To discuss the sales force size and compensation, we have here Mr. Raniel Mark Balolo. Sales force size. Sales representatives are one of the company's most productive and expensive assets. Increasing their number means increasing both sales and costs. When a company establishes the number of customers they want to reach, it can use a workload approach to establish sales force size. Sales force sizing is the strategic and analytical process of determining the optimal number of sellers by role or segment. Sa madaling salita, ito ang pagsiset o pagplaplano ng isang kumpanya sa pagpaparami o di kaya pag hire ng karagdagang sales representative sa nasabing kumpanya. No camera tricks were used in this commercial. Just BioLink VCO 5-Minute Hot Oil for intense moisture, now also in shampoo, mula sa splash. The sales force method has five steps. First, group customers into size classes according to annual sales volume. Second, establish desirable call frequency for each customer size. Third, multiply the number of accounts in each such class by the corresponding call frequency to arrive at the total workload for the country in the sales call per year. Fourth, determine the average number of calls a sales representative can make per year. And last, divide the total annual calls required by the average annual calls made by a sales representative to arrive at the number of sales representative needed. Ang mga step na to ay makakatulong upang madaling ma-determine ng kumpanya ang annual sales volume ng mga customers sa bawat klase. At doon, madali mo ring ma-determine kung gaano ba karami ang dapat mong i-hire na sales representative sa inyong kumpanya. Sa madaling salita, ang method na to ay ang pag-hire ng sales representative na siya namang bibigyan ng kota kung ilan ba yung customers na dapat nilang uh, mabentahan o mahikayat na bumili ng product nila para makamit, ng, makamit nila yung desire sales ng kumpanya. Sales force compensation. To attract top quality representative, the company must develop attractive compensation package. Ang paghihikayat ng mga sales representative ay hindi madali, kaya ang bawat company ay nagde-develop ng kaakit-akit na compensation package. Sales representatives wants income regularity extra rewards for above average performance and fair pay for experience and longevity. Naghahanap din ng mga sales representative ng mga benefits sa mga kumpanyang pinapasukan nila. And kadalasan, ang mga pinipili nilang kumpanya is yung may the best offer na benefits para sa kanila. For sales force compensation, the company must quantify these four components of sales force compensation. So first, fixed amount a salary that satisfy the need for income stability second variable amount whether commission bonus or profit sharing service to stimulate and reward effort third expense allowance it enables sales representative to meet the cost of travel and and entertaining on the company's behalf and lastly benefits this include paid vacation sickness accident uh, benefits, pension, health, life insurance, security, and job satisfaction. Ang mga nabanggit ang kadalasang hinahanap ng mga sales representative sa isang kumpanya na nais nilang pagtrabahuan. 
dito nagtatapos ang paglilinaw sa sales force size and compensation. Recruitment and selecting representative. This process um, is a process of screening and selecting the right candidates for managing the sales force. So, yung mga nag apply dito bilang sales representative, dumadaan po sila sa screening process para uh, salain kung sino ba dapat yung right person to fill this role. And yung next is training and supervising sales. So, after uh, piliin or maselect yung mga sales representative, kailangan nilang dumaan sa training para makagain ng additional skills and knowledge. Next, kailangan nila ng supervising. Kailangan nilang clear and uh, sufficient instruction kung ano nga ba dapat yung gagawin ng role nila. And last but not the least, we have here Kim Eileen Cruz to discuss motivating and evaluating representatives. Motivating sales representative. Most of the sales representative require encouragement and special incentives, especially those in the field who encounter daily challenges. Because marketers believe that the higher the salesperson motivation, the greater the effort and resulting performance. There are two rewards that can give to the sales representative. These are intrinsic and extrinsic rewards, an intangible price of acknowledgement, a sense of accomplishment, or conscious satisfaction is an intrinsic reward, while an ex extrinsic reward is an award that is provided in the form of physical object for completing a task. It is a visible acknowledgement of one's effort. Sales quotas is the target sales that need to hit by the sales representative within the given time by the company. It is more than sales forecast because they believe that it can encourage the managers and salesperson to perform at their best. Evaluating sales representative. Feed forward describe as how management communicates on what sales representative doing and what's motivate them to do it. Feed forward requires a good feedback. The most important sources of information about representative is the sales reports. Sales report divided into two, and these are activity plus and write-ups of activity results. Some information comes from personal observation, salesperson sales report, customer letters and complaint, customer service and conversation with other representative. Formal evaluation is the sales force reports along with the other observations supply the raw materials for evaluate. One type of evaluation compares current with past performance. Hey guys! Welcome! Welcome! Welcome to my YouTube channel, Trina Talks. And for today's interesting video, we are going to discuss the SPIN method, the major steps in effective selling. We have six here, and the relationship marketing. Without further ado, let's jump to the discussion! Hold up! first topic which is the spin method um, when we say spin method these are the questions being asked to the prospects in a partic in their particular order in order for the business um, to build a long-term relationship with their prospects nga, or buyers um, let, um, this is spin method it stands for situation problem implication and the uh, need pay off questions um, we have first the um, situation question. These questions are asked about the um, facts or explore the buyer's present situation. Um, it allows the, you to um, understand nga po yung um, current situation ng buyers nyo. Um, for example, questions are what system or tools are you are you using to invoice your customers, mga ganon? Um, for our second question, yung problem questions, um, this deals with the problems, difficulties, um, dissatisfactions ng mga buyers na na-experience nila dun sa product. Um, this question allows you to illustrate nga po yung mga problem na, that the pro, um, na yung 
um, product nyo is nasasolve ng problem na yon. So, here are the questions, example questions. What parts of the system create errors? How does the imp that impact sticks hold their buy-in? Mga ganon. And for our third um, question, yung implication questions, um, um, this asks about the uh, um, consequences or effects ng mga buyers, um, problem ng mga buyers na na-experience nila, yung mga dissatisfactions nila, yung mga difficult ni difficulties nila dun sa product. Um, in this question, um, in response nga po dun sa mga problems na na-identified or um, na-discover, this question will show the buyer um, why the problem need to be solved. Um, for example, questions are um, how does this problem affects your people's productivity? How this problems delayed project completion? Mga ganon. And for our last question, yung need pay off um, question, um, this asks about the value or yung usefulness ng proposed situation. Um, dito, yung question na ito, which is, um, it, hinahayaan mo yung buyer mo, mga buyers mo, yung mga prospects mo, na mag-conclude on their own. Um, hindi na kailangan na, hindi mo na kailangan na sabihin kung paano yung product or service mo is um, na-address yung mga problema nila dun sa product na na-offer. Um, for um, questions, example questions are, how much would you save if your company could help you reduce errors by 80%? Or yung would that be valuable to your team? Mga ganong mga questions. Um, and for the six steps, or major steps in effective selling, which is, na discuss na lang mga aking mga kasawa. Hi, I'm Alandra Aguari, and the next topic we will share about is the six steps of personal selling. The first one is prospecting and qualifying. The second one is pre-approach. The third one is the presentation and demonstration. Next is the overcoming objections. The fifth one is closing. And lastly, the follow-up and maintenance. The first step is prospecting and qualifying. Before you begin to sell, you must first identify and qualify your potential customer. In reality, many businesses today consider getting leads to be one of critical importance so their salesperson spend much of their time out fronting and chasing them down rather than the other way. IBM qualifies leads according to band acronym. Like, does the customer have the necessary budget, the authority to buy, a compelling need for the product or services, and a timeline for delivery that aligns with what is possible. Marketers these days are going beyond band and getting increasingly sophisticated in their, quali in their pursuit of qualified leads. So, let us move forward to the next step which is the pre-approach. When trying to close a deal, the salesperson should understand as much as possible about the prospect company what it needs, who is involved in purchasing decision, and its buyers, the personal characteristics, and the buying styles. To set goals such as qualifying the prospect, gathering information, and making immediate sales, the sales representatives must have a clear understanding of the buying process in terms of who, when, where, how and why. Another job is to determine the most effective method of contact. A personal visit, a phone call, an email, or a post. The appropriate approach is critical as it has become more difficult to sales representatives to gain access to the buying agents, physicians, and other time press and internet enabled potential customers offices Finally, the salesperson should develop an account-wide sales strategy. So that's it. Thank you for listening.
Pasarap ng bangon with Nescafe Creamy White. May creamer na, may Nestle Milk pa. Milky Creamier Coffee na walang pait. Mas masarap umaura. Achieve! Nescafe Creamy White. Third is the presentation and demonstration. The salesperson sell the product to the buyer wherein they use features, advantage, benefits, and value approach. Features describe the physical characteristic of the product such as chips, processors, speed, or the memory capacity, and advantage describe what features give the customer an edge and benefit describe the economic, technical, social, and service process delivered. And the value is the value is mono product. Salespersons spend too much time in the product features or the product orientation versus of ano, orientation ng customer kapag nagbabenta sila. Fourth is overcoming objections. Customer pose objections. So, dito, malalaman natin kung paano ihahandle ng mga salesperson yung mga objections na yun. So, magdalawa tayong objections. First is the psychological resistance or hindi interesado yung customer sa product mismo. Kaya inaayaw nila bumili. Second is yung logical resistance or yung pag-reject sa price, delivery time, or product, or dun sa company mismo. So, para ma-handle ito ng salesperson, gumagamit sila ng positive approach na kung saan tinatanong na rin kung customer ba't sila nag-object or inaayawang na bumili. And turn it into, ano, into para mas bumili sila. And alam naman natin na yung number one factor kung bakit hindi bumibili yung mga customer is sa price. So, gumagamit sila ng strategies na kung saan nagbibigay, nagpo-provide sila ng good quality ng product, nagbibigay sila ng one-year warranty, freebies, or kaya tinapabili nila yung product into installment. The fifth is closing. Dito ka mag-aas sa buyer mo ng question nila or mga comments regarding sa product. I-assist din ang salesperson kung ano yung order nila. Tinutulungan sila mag-decide sa maski maliliit na bagay gaya ng magpili ng color or size or chat na. Tapos sasabihin din niya yung mga factors na pwede mangyari kung sakali hindi mo ito bibili ngayon. Kumbaga, ito na yung time kung saan makikipag-deal na kayo kung ano yung gustong bilhin ng customer after ng mahaba ang pag-sales talk mo. Tapos kung hindi na convince yung buyer, yung manager or yung nasa higher position na yung lalapit or mag-a-assist sa'yo para makonvince ka na bumili. Para example sa lupa, sa closing, closing din, kung nakapag-decide na yung buyer, i-make sure mo na, na i-notes mo lahat ng mga decided item na bibili niya and also you'll give them insights about your product. The sixth is follow up and maintenance. Yun naman, yung mga extra services na ina-offer nila para ma-satisfy yung customer after nila bumili. Kagaya nung mga one-year warranty, ganun. Tapos kung may technical difficulties, sila mismo yung nag a After services, mas madalas na ginagamit to sa mga appliances. And for today's last topic, for today's vlog, we have the relationship marketing. This relationship marketing is an marketing approach that acknowledges the importance of both buyers and sellers in the marketing process. Um, in this topic, the key idea to this topic is the building, is that building long-term relationship with the customer. Um, you focus on the customer retention, high customer retention, high customer contact, mga ganun. You focus on Yun nga, customer commitments, ganon. And yun na nga po nagtatapos ang ating video for today. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and click the notification down below for more upcoming videos. Thank you! Bye! Philippines!